so freaking hot in here. I literally can't do this. Hello guys and welcome to today's video. Today I am doing the mid-year freak out tag. I watched these videos kind of circulating around last year on booktube but I wasn't really creating book content like I am now and then I saw Queen Noel and King Jack Edwards do this video and I was like okay I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do it so that is what we're doing today I am kind of in this bland corner of my room maybe we should do it where you can see a little bit of the bookshelf anyway it's so hot in my room so I'm gonna try to do this in a very timely manner so I don't literally sweat my whole entire body off okay okay guys so first of all I'm going to go through my statistics for this month because I saw Jack do this at the beginning of his video and I really wanted to share my stats with you guys. I use Storygraph. That's how I kind of keep track of all my stats. That's really the only reason that I use Storygraph. I wish Goodreads broke all of this stuff down for you, but they don't. Currently, I am sitting at 76 books read so far this year. My reading goal for 2022 was 75. I think I read either 103 something around that last year and I didn't want to pressure myself to read that many books this year so I picked 75 because I thought it was a pretty safe number and we've already gotten there so super happy about that I have read 30,326 pages in total my most read moods in my books are emotional lighthearted, funny adventurous reflective dark hopeful and sad mysterious intense I don't know how to feel about that. Um, there's about 72% of the books that I read are 300 to 499, 16% are 500 plus, and about 12% are under 300. My top genres that I read are romance, contemporary, and young adult. My most read authors are Kristen Becca Ritchie, L. Kennedy, Penelope Douglas, Mariana Zapata. Don't think that's surprising, love. But here's what's so interesting. Out of my 76 reviews that I have made this year, my average star rating is a 3.49 stars, which I think is very interesting. I like that. I like that I don't necessarily rate everything a five stars because I feel like it's very evenly rated. I feel like a 3.49 is a very good average rating. Those are all of my stats that I have to share with you. So now I'm going to go into the actual questions for this video. Now I'm going to get into the questions. So I'm actually going to have all of these questions down below so that you guys can do it, whether you have like a bookstagram, a book talk, a YouTube yourself, anything like that. I'm going to put this down below for you guys. First we have the best book you've read this year and that is so funny because obviously none of these are going to have just one specific answer. First of all I started the year all strong with reminders of him literally my favorite Colleen Hoover book ever. I freaking love this book so much. It is so emotional and so heartwarming. I literally love every like no other Colleen Hoover book has hit as hard as this book has. I don't know what it is about this book that I just love so, so much. Like, it's the mix of the romance in this book and the just emotional storyline that just really tugged at my heart and made me absolutely love it. So, this was like one of the best books that I read this year. And of course, I, literally, I couldn't go throughout this video without shouting out my Addicted series. I literally have read all of the complete Addicted, Addicted Calloway and it is my favorite books ever. Like genuinely, I have never thought about fictional characters in the way that I have thought about the Addicted Calloway series people and I just love them all so much. I genuinely think about them like they are real people and like I can just message them and it's sad that they are not real but I love them. Those are my favorite books I've read this year and ever. And then of course I have to say book lovers Emily Henry. You guys know Emily Henry is one of my favorite authors. Would it be a video if I didn't do that? You know, and I absolutely loved Book Lovers. There, it still, it didn't beat Beach Read for me, but I freaking loved, loved the storyline, loved the characters. We will get back to this in a second. You better believe that book is coming back up. And then also, surprisingly, a little bit every summer after, like when I was looking at my bookshelf and thinking about the books that I've read this year, this one is definitely one of my favorites, even though it isn't a five star read. It reminded me of a mix of The Summer I Turned Pretty and Love and Other Words, and I like both of those books. Love Love and Other Words. It's one of my favorite books ever of all time, but I liked The Summer I Turned Pretty, and this is just such a good mix of it. I loved the girl character in this book. I loved her name. Her name is Persephone. 
and they called her Percy, like, hello, don't catch me naming my daughter Persephone, but I really surprisingly loved this book. I didn't think I would love it as much. Actually, that's a lie because this book was getting so much hype and has a lot of hype around it and I didn't know if I would love it, but I did. Now we have the best sequel you've read this year and I actually do only have one book for this category and that is none other than The Hawthorne Legacy. You guys, I absolutely love this series. I cannot wait for the final one to come out in August, I'm pretty sure. And this one was so good, especially since I rated the Inheritance Games like a four, four and a half stars. And I loved this one. I rated it at five stars. Like, I did not expect to love the Inheritance Games series so much. And I genuinely freaking love it. And this one I loved even more because you already had the storyline established. You already had the characters established. Also, there's a love triangle, like subplot romance in this book. Don't ask me which team I am because I have forgotten. Is that bad that I love these books but I forgot which team I'm on? The older one. Who's the older one? I don't like the younger one. No, I like the younger one. Like, they're neck and neck, but if I had to choose, I would definitely choose the older one. Because I feel like, I feel like that's who she's going to end up with. And I like him. So, maybe I'm just saying that because I want her to end up with him. Is it Jameson? Pretty sure that's Jameson. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I'm sorry. Now we have new releases you haven't read yet, but you want to read. Now these are some pretty very recent releases because I feel like I'm very diligent about reading new releases. Like I read them so fast as soon as they come out, but I do want to read Something Wilder by Christina Lauren and Is It My Killer Vacation by Tessa Bailey. Those two just came out this month and I really want to read them. Cannot wait to read them. I just want the paperback of Something Wilder, but I can't wait to read those. I definitely think I'm going to be reading those like next month or something like that. Next is the most anticipated releases of the second half of the year. Definitely have to start out strong with It Starts With Us. It's coming out in October and I cannot wait. If you guys didn't know, it's like the second installment of It Ends With Us. Like they're like kind of sister books. It's not really like a duet. It's just like goes along with It Ends With Us. And it's kind of like the continuation, like what happens after. So I guess it kind of is connected. I don't know, but I cannot wait for that book. Oh my gosh, literally. I am so excited. That's definitely the book that I'm the most excited for to be released. And then of course, like I said earlier, I cannot wait for the final gambit to come out, the third book in the Inheritance Games. I just want to see how this trilogy wraps up and I want to see who Avery ends up with because don't we all, but we all love the brothers, all of them. Who is your favorite new author? And this could be an author that isn't necessarily like a new like up and coming author, but maybe just the author that you discovered this year. And mine would definitely be Lauren Asher. I just started reading her books. I read the fine print, terms and conditions. I read the first book in the Dirty Air series, and I am going to be reading the rest of them very, very soon. And I just don't know why I love her writing. I love her characters. Like everything is so interesting to me. So she's definitely one of my new favorite authors, as well as Krista and Becca Ritchie, because they wrote the Addicted Cali Sister series and you have to be amazing to have written those books. Who is your newest fictional crush? And um, obviously my biggest fictional crush and I just read these books this year, so would have to be Mr. Lauren Hale. Okay, Mr. Lauren Hale. Listen, he loves superheroes, he loves comic books. He is him. Do I have to go further into that? Lilo? is my favorite. It would probably go Lilo, Crazy, and then, um, what is Connor and Rose's ship name? Do they just call him Connor and Rose? Cobalt? No, Cabalaway? Wait. Is it Cabalaway? Oh my god, I'm being fake. Is it Cabalaway? I don't know. Anyway, but th that is like what I would rank them, and I just love Lauren Hale. But a close second is um, none other than Charlie Lastra from Book Lovers. I don't know why. He's in the publishing industry, his banter, and just the energy, like you guys know, the energy that he puts out, like Charlie Lastra. Plus, he lets Nora be the strong, independent woman she is. Like, we love a self-assured man. Books that made you cry, and actually, it's very hard for a book to make me cry. Like, I don't cry very easily with books. Like, a lot of people are like, oh my god, this made me cry, and I'm like, I don't know why. Like, I could see where you cry, but I guess it just wasn't that sad for me. But, but first of all, reminders of him. Like, if you didn't cry at this book, I might ask why? And what has made you be this way? Because 
this book was so freaking sad but it was also so heartwarming and emotional and cute and so it's just read this this is basically me just trying to convince you to read this book if you haven't yet and then i recently read like a bunch of sad books for a video so if you guys want to watch that you guys can and i read bright side by kim holden and this book made me cry only towards the end like it's really a normal book for the most part but i just cried very hard at the end and then this is the book that i cried to like a little bit like tears were kind of streaming down my face but i wasn't sobbing because i wouldn't allow myself to sob because i was so numb it's like how a little life was with me like i wanted to cry in that book but i didn't because i was so numb because there had already been so many things like going on but that would be none other than pack up the moon because the way that this book is described and the way that Joshua and Lauren's love is so pure and undying for each other, like it is a ball of fire. Like just their love for each other is just a burning ball of fire. And it just to read about a love like that so pure and genuine just also made me emotional because like you don't see that like in these romances you're like oh yeah it's cute like they really like each other but this was a genuine like true love connection like so genuine you love this person so deeply and what happens in this book and everything like it it just broke my heart into a million pieces so if that sounds appealing to you definitely pick up pack up the moon by chris and higgins now we're gonna go total opposites um books that made you happy which you will need after those recommendations definitely book lovers i don't know if it was just because it was emily henry's new release that i loved it so much or that i just loved this i just loved this book so much i'm talking about it multiple times because i love it a lot i feel like a lot of people like a lot of people like this book but i feel like people didn't love it like i said it definitely doesn't compare to beach read like beach read is still going to be one of my favorite books of all time and definitely my favorite emily henry book as of now but this book comes in a very 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 close second i'm also going to say the summer broken rules this book again was just a super cute and fun book like such such visco girl summer vibes like the setting it takes place in martha's vineyard and just like the jeeps and just the playing this assassins game with your family and like running around this like land that you own in this small town that has beautiful coastal vibes like you know like what is that trend going around right now like coastal granddaughter that everyone's freaking out about right now like that's what this book is so if you love that aesthetic you are going to love this book and just the vibes made me so happy next is the most beautiful book you have bought slash received this year so this is like covers like we're talking covers here which is my forte we know how much that i love a good covers moment first of all this may be random but yerba buena like i'm sorry but this cover like i love the colors in it the deep contrasting like the contrasting of the colors like i don't know why like i literally have this displayed on my shelf all the times and i love like the meaning because one woman does like bartending the other one's a florist so that's kind of tied in in the cover like this is so appealing to my eyes this is so aesthetic i just want to like put this everywhere on display and then funny you should ask i just love this color combination i love pink and red together it is one of my favorite color combinations and i just love the like comic book style i love the font i love the colors together like everything about this book cover i freaking love i posted a picture with this book on my bookstagram so if you guys aren't following my bookstagram go follow my bookstagram it's at what's desk reading and follow my name at desk sister while you're at it if you want to you know if you're feeling like it the very last question are what books that you specifically need slash want to read by the end of the year i definitely would say i want to read all of akatar i want to read all of akatar I haven't even read the first one yet but we will be reading it this month guys do not worry <coughs> um i want to read that i want to also finish the shadow on bone and six of crows just because all of that is in the same universe. I really want to get to that so I can watch the TV show finally. I still don't watch the TV show of that. I want to finish the Dirty Air series. Like I said, Lauren Asher's became quickly one of my favorite authors. So I definitely want to finish that series. And then I definitely want to try to get through Mariana Zapata's backlist because I love a good MZ moment. That my friends is the mid-year freakout tag like i said i'm gonna have the questions down below for you guys to answer you guys can pick certain questions to answer down below you guys can do it on your bookstagram on your book talk on your book channel anything that you want you guys can it's like a super fun thing it's like a mid-year check-in anyway that is it for today's video i hope you guys liked so you guys know what to do like comment subscribe all that youtube stuff you guys know how to do and with that being said i will see you guys when i see you peace